So for those of us, there are 77 in our room today. Thanks so much for joining us here today. My name is Kylie. My company is called Made by Princess, and my website is madebyprincessparties.com. And I've sort of evolved over the years. I started out doing printables and invitations, and now I have a blog, and it's party-centered. So I do um, party inspiration and recipes and DIYs, and um, and now I do brand sponsorship a lot. Sometimes I do that. So I'm going to pass it over to Keisha. I've known Keisha for how many years have we known each other, Keisha? Oh, it's probably three or four years now. But we met. It feels first... longer. I know. But we met for the has. very first time at Bash, and then we've been business besties and, yeah. we, you oh, know, always yeah. trade ideas and you know, kind of business tips and what we want to do um, with each other. So we've been rolling hard for three years. We have. Or so. <laughs> yeah, we have. I think I, I think we talk about every day. Yep. Oh, wow. Yep. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm, so I, wanted, I wanted you to tell everybody about you, Keish. Okay. So I'm Keisha Seibert and my blog is Cupcake Wishes and Birthday Dreams. I'm having like, who do I look at here? Like, I know. Like, I have that too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look at you. It's easier okay. to talk to somebody. Um, so I blog on Cupcake Wishes and Birthday Dreams and it's pretty much started out as a blog where I would share um, party ideas, tips for um, entertaining, hosting at home, throwing parties for my kids, um, recipes, uh, cupcake ideas and now I'm sort of at the same place you are and you know we've talked about it before as far as evolving from where I was when I first started into doing kind of more lifestyle and incorporating what I love kind of all around and that is everything still from parties and entertaining but also recipes uh I still do the printables, what's going on with, you know, my Etsy shop. So there's just a lot of components to it, but that's pretty much where I am right now. So blogging is evolutionary and that's where I am. Cool. Mm -hmm. Jillian, I think the first time we talked, we probably would have carried on for another three hours. Oh my gosh. <laughs> totally. Yes. And then I met yeah. you both in person at Bash. The yeah, first Bash, we did. Yeah. Which yep, is yep, super yep. cool. Yeah. Um, so hi, I'm Jillian, and I have a site called Catch My Party. I run it with my husband. We are the largest party ideas site on the web, and we show off parties from other people. So if you throw parties, add your photos to our site, because I could easily show you off. And um, we also have recipes, free printables, party DIYs, that kind of thing. So there's our blog, which is at catchmyparty.com, and you can check that out written by me and because social media is so important and we'll talk about this we built a pop-up for ourselves to our social media and in fact I just checked today and our Pinterest following has just crossed 550,000 followers oh my gosh, and Jillian. part of the reason that we how we were able to grow it was by using this pop-up that sits on our site pops up and asks people to follow us right now we have it set just to Pinterest but it will also work to grow Instagram followers and Facebook followers. So it worked so well for us. We spun it out as a, a small company called Milo Tree, and you can find it at milotree.com, and I'll put it in the comments. Um, but if you're a blogger, check it out because it's free, and you two lovely women use it as well. Yes, and I do. And it will just... If you have traffic to your blog, it will grow your followers without you having to and do anything. It's so, a true statement. Your affiliate. Oh, thank you. And you have an affiliate mm -hmm. program. And we have an affiliate program. So mm -hmm. if you really like it, join our affiliate program because you can make money by promoting it. Um, and it's funny because we monetize Catch My Party via advertising. So this is the first time that I'm out in front of people selling something or promoting something. But I have to say it's only because it works. And so yeah. it's, it's easy to do. So again, if you, I will put it in the comments right now. Um, but if you have a blog, go to milotree.com and download it for free. And we have a WordPress plugin, super easy to install. So check it out. I'm just going to quickly go through the comments. So I make sure I'm not missing any questions. Okay. Let's talk about, um, 
blogging. So we're gonna, I know we're gonna go through a bunch of things. So we're gonna talk about Pinterest and Instagram and um, kind of wh where we started and where we are now, because things have really changed mm -hmm. from where we began. So blogging, that's kind of where, where we got our start. And, uh, and what, year, start. what year did you guys start your blogs? Oh gosh, I think mine, I see my son was about, I have to go by the ages that the kids were. He was, I'm going to say two or three years old. No, my God, no, he was one. Yeah, it was his first birthday. And I remember blogging about his birthday. And um, I remember I was looking, see at the time, Jillian, the kids parties were always shown on this um, site, and I think it's called bestkidsparties.com. And I was like, oh man, this like, I, I'm not seeing what I want and I'm not getting like the feel that I want. I always imagined when I threw a party for my child or both of my kids, that it would be a little bit over the top because I always, <laughs> you know, I've always <laughs> been like the party planner, making events happen and, you know, always wanting to celebrate some super occasion. I got it from my grandmother. She always hosted and entertained at home. So whenever I would go to this site, you know, there are all these parties, but they just weren't what I wanted. And then I came across three sites that I remember in particular. One was Polka Dots and Pirates. The other one was Tomcat Studio. And then the other one was Kara's Party Ideas. And I'm like, that's what I want. That's what I want to do. And so I just kind of honestly mimicked what they were sharing on their blog and being a creative person and a crafty person, I kind of just threw together these parties for my kids. And they were honestly looking back horrible. I know. You know, <laughs> they were pretty bad, but I gave it a good effort. And um, it just started from there. I started to share um, what I was doing as far as throwing my kids parties. And then I got into making cupcakes. And this is kind of around the same time when cup the cupcake trend was really starting to take off and I mean, before Georgetown Cupcakes and the Cupcake Girls and all of the, you know, cupcakery bake shops that you see, um, there was a book published by, and I think I want to say her first name is Karen, and I cannot remember her last name, but she had the most adorable, you know, cupcakes that you can make with different candies and such. And that was something that I'd always done, just kind of putting things together as far as, you know, treats and sweets. And I'm like, well, this is right up my alley too. So I started sharing that. And that's kind of how the name Cupcake Wishes and Birthday Dreams got thrown together. I would um, give out cupcakes and provide cupcakes for my friends and help some of my friends with their kids' parties. And then I would blog about it. Um, and because I like crafty things, I started blogging about crafty things. And then I was approached by um, a graphic design company, MG, um, what is it? No, My Graphico, My Graphico. And then they asked me, could I be one of their party bloggers? And I said, sure, why not? So I started taking images from their um, graphic designers and creating printables for there. So then I started making printables. <laughs> so it kind of just all evolved from that. And I just shared what I was doing in hopes that somebody would possibly read it. And eventually I started to um, make connections with wonderful ladies such as yourself and um, also kind of monetizing a little bit through sponsored posts. And that's right. kind of how it all started. And, and what year? What year was that? Um, I think I want to say it was 2008, 2009. Mm-hmm. I think along, as you're talking about monetizing, that's an important part of this. Sorry, my phone's right. Um, we used to sell ad space on, on our blogs. And that kind of, maybe blogs still do, but there are so many other different ways of selling, of monetizing. And I know that um, Jessica Gavin, are you here, Jessica? Are you still here? I know that she talks a lot about monetizing on her blog. And you know she's very open with that. Um, Jessica, do you want to pop in and, and quickly tell us about how you do that? Because I know that you are a food blogger, and um, if you if you want, can you pop in? How do you do that? Do you have to unlock her seat? I think I did. Okay. It says it says unlock. There we go. Okay. There she is. There we go. Okay. 
Jessica's my favorite. I mean, <laughs> I don't understand. She's like my favorite food blogger. Her yeah. food, her recipes. Wait, wait. Does she need are to off like, the hook. enable enable her camera? She's uh, and that's why she. Are you there, black. Jessica? She's calling in. It looks like, but then if she yeah. just hits the little kind of there's a camera button at the top of the web browser. She click on the camera. Yeah, it's all the way to the right. I think she's trying. She's gonna try and come back. Um, okay, while we're while we're trying to get Jessica back, so monetizing. I know that uh, there's a lot of different ways to monetize, and it's whether it's sponsored content or um, hi Ashley. Ashley Marie knows a lot about monetizing as well. She yes. is the YouTube goddess. She's going to come in for and talk to us about that as well. Right. So but I, I would I would just jump in. Sorry. The easiest. Yes. I think that if you have a blog, um, start putting Amazon affiliate links on. Yeah, yeah that's another monetize. good one. Like just to kind of throw up some links because it takes a while as your traffic grows for people to maybe find those posts. But make sure when you are talking about any kind of product, put a link to that product. And the easiest affiliate program to join is Amazon because we all shop on Amazon. So, absolutely. Yeah, and that's a real easy one to get into as well. Some of it them is. are not easy to get into. And everybody really likes Amazon. And then if you also have a Prime subscription, it just you know allows you to get your products much faster. So I think it's Hi, one. Jessica. Hi, Jessica. Hi. Hi. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for inviting me. So I I understand, you, you know, I know you do a monthly blog report, a monetizing report. So thank you for joining us real quick and letting us know how you do that. I know that this is a, a food blogger space and this is a, a great place for you to share how you do that. Yeah, I definitely heard someone mention Amazon. Um, I always add at least one, maybe two affiliate links um, to like a product that might be kind of unique um, in my recipe or like maybe a tool that I use. Like obviously spiralizing is really hot right now. So I just started doing that and I've heard from my readers, oh, you know, I, I bought the spiralizer. So that kind of helps you get a little bit of, of money. But um, I think the biggest thing is just having um, different um, M networks like Sovereign or Gamut or May Ads, Swoop. Um, Google AdSense um, is good too, but it doesn't really give me a, a ton of income. Um, but if you want more detailed information, like I definitely have that on my our monthly income reports that we have. Um, and then I started doing sponsored posts as well in January. And um, if you're just starting. Um, I would say social fabric is really good. It's a really good network to do. Yeah. And then also um, I've done Clever Girls. Um, I just recently signed up for Ehology. And um, so those are the, the top ones that I've, I've worked with. And then also, I mean, brands reach out to you or you can also try pitching as well. Um, if you could kind of see, you know, maybe there's like a few ideas. It would be really cool or say if you saw that um, through social fabric that someone was um, like Smuckers is doing a campaign and you didn't land that campaign, maybe since you kind of know what they're looking for, you can kind of pitch an idea directly to them instead. So that might be also a good way to monetize. And wait, just, just so you know, somebody just asked the question of, do you put, do you disclose when you put affiliate links? And we always do. We just write like a fill, put it in parens, something like that. But yes, because you want to be totally transparent with yes. your audience. So definitely, Absolutely. definitely show it. Let people know. Yes. And, and just so you know, we work with networks. We work with Tap Influence. We work with Hello Society. Those are some uh, networks that we work with. Yeah. Yes. And the other thing I found out about doing sponsored posts is, so we joked about this the other day on our test call, but I am you know, kind of on a low carb, high fat um, way of eating right now. And so I do not want to put anything on my blog that I wouldn't actually do in real life. And so I think it's important to bring in a lot of authenticity with your um, posts and your storytelling as yes. far as like, this is actually what I would eat. This is actually what I would recommend for, you know, my readers or followers to try. However, I am not 
that far removed from reality to, you know, think that, you know, here I am with the blog called Cupcake Wishes and Birthday Dreams to not really think that there aren't people out there that still love to eat sweets and candies and all those things. And I would still show those too, because my kids, you know, they, they want those things and I don't mind giving it to them. Um, of course, in moderation, but just kind of be real about it. And that's what I like so much about Jessica's blog and how she, you know, shares, you know, kind of the story behind the recipe. I mean, she's got all these great, you know, stories from her childhood and, you know, her mom and her grandmother teaching her how to make these really good dishes, but she's kind of brought them to a newer place. And it's really kind of, you know, more modern. And, you know, like I told her the other day, my favorite dish to make of hers is the, um, cauliflower cauliflower shrimp fried rice it's so good yeah. it's so good <laughs> I it. so i mean there's just you know you can you can you can take a lot from somebody when they're being kind of when you can feel how genuine they are and then you'll say okay well I'm going to go out and buy that product totally. because she uses it and I trust her now. Right. You know, I trust what she's saying. So I think that's kind of like one of the key things. Like you feed me with these pictures and these beautiful images, but the stories also kind of, you know, bring it to, to real life and you connect that way. Definitely. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest thing too, is like no one can take that part away from you, you know, because mm -hmm. I feel like recipes, they evolve in their, a history like that connects all of us so I, I couldn't say like oh I created the cauliflower rice you know obviously I didn't but then I have my own personal story and reason why I did it and like how I go about it and maybe something unique I can share so it's just kind of building this like um, community you know with recipes and just kind of acknowledging that and sharing your own personal perspective definitely so I have three qu three rapid yeah. fire questions for you Jessica before we let you go okay. what your favorite thing to cook? Mm. Oh, that's a hard one, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think my favorite thing to cook and make is um, homemade dumplings. Ooh. So, pot stickers, okay. and lately I made one that was like a vegetarian one, making it a little bit healthier. But that's something that me and my grandma and mom used to make, say on like the weekends together. So, if anything, it like speaks to my heart the most. So that's my favorite thing to make. Can, can we find that on your blog? blog? Yes, you can. Okay, good. Uh, your favorite phone app? Oh, my favorite phone app. Oh, gosh. Uh, does it have to be blogging related? <laughs> no. Oh, man. Okay. Nike Training Camp. Um, we eat a lot of okay. food as food yeah. bloggers <laughs> and cupcakes. <laughs> so when I'm on the go or like I can't get to the gym, Nike Training Camp is my favorite. And I mean, I just right now for blogging, um, I love Instagram. It's my favorite for social media. Yeah. It was my third one. What's your favorite yeah. social media? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, Jessica, thank you for joining us for our, our quick open seat. I appreciate you, you answering our questions and sharing your knowledge with us. Thank you so much, Kelly. Thank you for inviting me, Keisha. Thank you. <laughs> so wait, so somebody just asked a question, which is, Okay. Do you ladies feel that text attached to a picture or video, like the caption, is admissible or should the picture video speak for itself? So just to give my two cents on that, I think they both matter. I think that the visual is the first thing people will notice. So you want right. that to just pop and look amazing. But then you want to bring people in with how you describe it, what you say, what your story is about it, so people understand the context of the image. Because images can seem cold, even if they're beautiful, by themselves. So you want to warm them up with text. So that's my right. thought about it. Yeah. I agree with you on that. I think, um, especially like with Instagram and Pinterest, because that's, you know, we are talking about visual storytelling. So that's kind of exactly where, um, you know, people are right now. People just kind of just go straight to an image. They're looking for an idea. They're looking for how to do something. They're looking, you know, for how to create something. So they're going right to like, either you go into Google and you click on images and then it Boom, takes you to Pinterest or it takes you, you know, to Instagram or you're on Instagram and you see something and those images, they do draw you in and then you, you want to find out more. You want to go into depth. If it catches your eye, you know, nine times out of 10, you're going to read what it's about. If you're on Pinterest, you're going to go click the link to figure out how to get to where you need to get. And I think you posted a few months back on um, 
hashtags to use for Instagram. And it was so eye-opening for me because I did not realize how important they were. I mean, I just thought of them as search tools, but I never thought of them as far totally. as engagement uh, yeah, was absolutely. concerned. So yeah, it's made a difference. And I'm still honestly finding my Instagram footing because you know, I'm trying to find my rhythm and my flow with how I would love to present my Instagram for my business page. But I think I'm getting there and it takes some work. And the reason I say that is because I, I'm sure I'm not the only one and it's okay if you haven't gotten there yet. Um, but also what I like what you're doing, Kylie, is you're also finding images from other users and they go in sync with your brand and you know what what you what the message you want to convey to your followers as far as who you are as a as a person that I know you to be but also what your what your brand is and so it just makes a lot of sense to have those images and then put them out there and then you know let people know okay well either this came from somebody else and you know here's what I love about it or you have your own story so to wait, tell. So we're getting some well, let's, more questions. Yeah, I want to go back to, I saw um, Green Scheme TV. I feel like my story is too short with recipes. I was wondering if you needed to take time to expand. So I don't think you need to spend a whole ton of time on a huge story. And I think pictures can tell a big story. And not a lot, you know, people don't want to spend a lot of time reading. And I think if you have great pictures, even then that's going to tell a lot. But you do need to say something. Have a short intro and tell something about your story, but then let the pictures tell it. Do you girls agree? Totally. Absolutely. Yeah. Again, use emojis. Yeah. Use things yeah. that can just give you a little bit of personality because that's what people want to see. They don't want to just, you know, they're in a, like brands kind of don't really have personality and the ones that do tend to do best. So just give yourself yeah. some personality, something that makes you specific, why people like you. Yeah. That's what I would say. So, so we're right. being asked, um, how, do, what are, how do you guys stand out on Pinterest? And I just want to yeah. talk about that for just a sec, which is if you go to milotree.com and you download our pop-up, I will then, Keisha was talking about, I'll send you emails to hopefully give you some strategies to get noticed on Pinterest. But the first thing that I would say on Pinterest is keywords, which is what is your audience searching for? You want to serve them up exactly what they're looking for. So go on to Pinterest, do some searches, see what people are looking for, and then use those keywords in your board titles, in your page description, in your pin descriptions, because that's how to get, so that's one thing to get, how to get found. Two, use beautiful images and put text on top of those images and make sure they are they mm -hmm. are a uh, portrait style and law and and this is i was talking to some of the people at Ology, and i said those obnoxiously long images do those do well on pinterest and the answer was a resounding yes so make your pins extra long because they will get yeah. discovered with beautiful photos so that's my take on it. Yeah. yeah. And you, I think with that, absolutely. Yeah. I have, in fact, I have a, a hack for that. I don't like those long images in my blog posts. I, I think they kind of junk up the post, but there is a way to hide them. And I have a code, I have WordPress and I said, and I am not, I'm sure there is a way to do it in blogger, but there, and in fact, I wrote a post on this in word in my wordpress on my blog you can use a, an html code to hide that so that there it goes at the bottom of the pet of your wordpress post so but when you go to pin the post pin the image it'll it'll pop mm -hmm. up but it won't actually show in the post mm -hmm. but so that the pinnable image shows up mm -hmm. but it won't show up in your post another hack for that is to shrink your image size down to one pixel by one pixel your big image but it will show up if somebody is going to pin from that post and it will show all the pins. Yeah. Oh, that's so true. Just, that's yeah. a, that's yeah. something you might try. Too. That's true too. But I will yeah. say this, yeah, I, which is Pinterest is a great traffic driver. So if, if you're in the food space, if you're in the like food and drink boards are the most popular boards on Pinterest. So if you're yeah, in, right. in food and drink, if you're in style, if you're in parties, 
um, those are what people are searching for. So that's your sweet spot. So while Instagram, yeah. at least for us, is all about brand building, meaning we want to show brands, we want to show what our brand is about, and then we also want to show other brands who might want to work with us, here's what our Pinterest, you know, we can get exposure on Pinterest, but it does not drive traffic to our site. And I don't know about you guys. Pinterest is right below Google for my highest traffic. And some days it's my highest yeah. traffic. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely been that way for me as well. And like I said, with your plugin, I mean, I'm being honest with you. I've just honestly noticed a huge jump in numbers. Um, and and also, you which, which you know, social networks are you growing with the Milo Tree pop up? Pinterest and Instagram, okay. mostly. Yeah. And those are the two that I have popping up. So it makes sense. And I can see, you know, kind of, and I know exactly which images are related to um, my Etsy sales. Um, and I noticed when I also started posting new um, products on Instagram, they were showing up obviously on my blog and then the sales went up for those items too. So it does, you know, make a difference. But, you know, the, all, I think one thing I wanted to ask you, Jillian, was when we're in Pinterest and so we're following, you know, kind of people like us, you know, I'm not following too many fashion mm -hmm. bloggers and I'm not following um, too many tech mm -hmm. bloggers. So most of the images I'm noticing in my feed are going to be, um, you know, food, um, recipes, um, how to DIY, cleaning crafts, parties, you know, things like that. So if a food blogger is actually on Pinterest and constantly, you know, pinning, you know, food images, does Pinterest know, okay, this person really likes pinning about food. So I'm going to then just shoot them a bunch of, you know, food images on Pinterest so that they can repin those. And then that helps to drive what to their, to their kind of site if that I don't know if that's like the right wording but how does yeah, are that you work talking about the Pinterest smart feed or are you talking about yes you know when yeah. you first go and into Pinterest you, and you so can what kind they're of, doing yeah. is they are showing you pins based on your behavior so the fact that you're not okay. pinning photos of shoes they're not going to show you shoes so they're going to show you stuff right. that is similar to stuff you already are indicating that you like so right Okay, that's what I thought, because it would make sense then, like, if we're, you know, if we're, you know, here with food bloggers and, you know, they want to kind of get any type of uh, movement on their blogs to just really go and hit Pinterest up that way. Hey, hey ladies. Get that plug in. <laughs> I'm going to bring up Ashley. Ashley, I oh, know, great. are you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I know these food bloggers are going to want to hear from Ashley because she is the, thanks, Ashley. Hey, she's awesome. Sauce yeah. is what Hi, she is. Can you guys hear me okay? Hi, Ashley. <laughs> oh, you look hey. so pretty. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hi. I had to get dressed for you guys, uh, right? We, we <laughs> totally. You look like you look like joy. <laughs> you do. You well, do. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm videoing some um, some video classes right now, so I'm all make up up. Yeah, you are. <laughs> so I want you to introduce yourself to the to the room. Uh, I'm sure yeah. a lot of them know who you are already. <laughs> uh, I'm Ashley from the blog AshleyMarie.com. I uh, do from scratch recipes and cake decorating. And my big thing is I've been blogging for nine years. I have been YouTubing for just over a year. And I'm throwing a retreat this year teaching food bloggers and bloggers how to get into the YouTube space. Because in one year, I went from zero to 12,000 subscribers. And I want to help others do the same because I'm all about video. <laughs> yeah, you are. Yeah. You're like the YouTube I'm goddess kidding. right now. Oh, thank you. I'm kind of like beating a dead horse. I, I push video to pretty much anyone who will listen. You do. So. Mm -hmm. I you do. do. But I think you're right. I think you, you get the future. Uh, I hope so. Yeah. I'm, I'm betting on that horse for sure. So yeah. Yeah. And I think everyone else should as well. Yeah. So tell us about your process for video. Uh, yeah. So like why I do it or how I do it. Take a pass. <laughs> what do you want to <laughs> tell us about uh, what you want to tell us? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, my big one is uh, so many people are scared of videos. And um, my big thing is you, 
you don't have a choice anymore. You know, there is, <laughs> yeah. uh, there is video on every platform. There are a lot of options for video on platforms and you just need to pick whichever platform works for you. And rather than the one that you're the most comfortable with, pick the one that has the opportunity for growth and where your audience may be. Um, and, and just start just start. I'm in all of the video platforms and I think everybody should be, but um, just, just do it. You know, Nike has the best theme ever. Just do it. Um, <laughs> for me, I knew that I wanted to expand into YouTube because rather than, I mean, I do all, all of them, but YouTube is my main one. And the reason that I really push YouTube is um, because of the advertisers, honestly, and because yeah. of the future audience, you know, as bloggers, I would say that for the most of us, our audience is maybe an older audience. Um, baby boomers love to read and search for recipes. And I mean, I do have some younger people, but that's where my majority of my blog audience is. And the, uh, the millennials have taken over as the largest demographic yeah. that there is right now. Mm -hmm. And they are where the advertisers want to spend their money. The advertisers mm -hmm. want to reach this largest group of people who are just coming into their money. And, um, and so that's where I feel like I need to be finding my audience. And they have been raised not to read, like Facebook's article last week about oh, the written word going away. They have been raised to watch video. And let's face it, this yeah. is what everybody uses most of the time. And have you tried reading a blog post on a phone? <laughs> it's, and especially a tutorial based blog post, right? It's just like, yeah. uh, um, we're watching a video, bam, super easy. And so yeah. for me, that's the future. And I've, I've been blogging for a long time. So I'm a blogger from back in the day, oh, like a double thing sticking out. <laughs> um, and I remember when bloggers came to you because they were loyal, because they loved you. They loved yes, your personality. Right, Does yes, anybody else remember yes. that? <laughs> yes, I, I miss do. that. I, do. I miss working yeah. so hard uh, just to get people <laughs> to my site. I love that they love me. I'm a little bit obsessed with myself, yeah. I guess. And uh, <laughs> I think everybody else should be too. Um, and so YouTube still has that. Uh, YouTube, they love the creator. They're obsessed with you. You get super fans. Mm. And what's the best way to make money? To sell things to your super fans. <laughs> mm -hmm. Super yep. fans are the ones who are going to uh, be loyal. It's going to spend the money on you. They're going to be your cheerleaders. They're going to advertise for you. Um, and YouTube is the place to do it, in my opinion. You know, every video platform has its strength and its pros for sure. Um, and YouTube is hard because it's like regrowing your blog all over again. You do have to start and grow, um, but I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it. And I think in the long run, if you're looking at how, if you're looking at hosting your blog for more than just a couple years, more than just to make money right now, uh, you should really consider being in YouTube for sure. So wait, so, so how do you sell stuff? in your videos? Are yeah. you putting affiliate links into the comments? What you know, are you doing? Making money on YouTube is just like making money on your blogs, ads, affiliates, uh, sponsored content, and then selling your own product, eBooks, stuff like that. Exactly the same. So the transition over from money making standpoint is super simple. Um, and okay. ads do not pay as well in video yet. Uh, the bigger you get, the better they, get that they pay. And the, it's kind of like the wild west. Advertisers are mm -hmm. spending so much money in traditional video format, and yet there are 35 Super Bowls on YouTube every day, and you don't have to pay millions mm -hmm. of dollars to advertise there. In fact, it's a great place if you have a product. I would tell you to create a video ad and then use Google AdSense to really be specific on what pages you want to advertise on. If you go into one of my cake videos, I would bet 80% of the time you will see a, a advertisement for Wilson because they... Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. just push their advertising to people watching cake videos, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And you mm -hmm. can do the same thing, and it's super cheap. So if you are selling something, like I'm going to be making an ad over Thanksgiving for my Thanksgiving ebook, and I'm going to spend money, and it's not going to be a video on my channel. It's going to be an ad that plays in front of other people's videos, and I'm going to advertise mm -hmm. something that I'm selling because it's so cheap to advertise there, pennies on the dollar, if you're selling your product. Wow. And then can you put the link in the video? Like, can you yeah. have it be hot so that you can click? within the video? Uh, yes and no. Like yes and no. Okay. Um, they're changing their end cards right now. Uh, okay. And end cards, you, those, you know, those pretty pictures at the end where I had the little boxes in the corners, mm -hmm. they used to only work on mobile. Mm -hmm. And then they got something mm -hmm. called um, annotation. No, no, sorry. Annotations was the one you had to, that, that could only work in mobile. They now have something called uh, cards 
and the cards work on mobile too, but it's just a little icon right up here. It's a little eye and you click on it, it opens up larger and we'll go to any links that you specify. And they're working on new end cards, the boxes at the end that will be clickable on mobile as well. And they're slowly rolling those out to channels, but you're still limited in what you can link to. You can link to your site that you have on file. You can link yep. to a crowdfunding page, but you can't link to like Amazon. Um, so like I sell my ebook on my site, link to that, no problem. Uh, Amazon links, I put in the description box down below. And um, I it did definitely up my the money that I was making in affiliates, but that's as a food blogger, I don't know, maybe I'm the only one, but food blogger for me, affiliates are not my bread and butter in any way, shape or form. Um, and the other good one is sponsored. Uh, you can charge a lot more for video. And, and how do you have to disclose in video that you're working with That's a sponsor? That's a great question. I always say it right up front in those first like minutes, 30, 30 seconds, really, because I want to get right to my recipe. Speed, speed, speed at the beginning. Get them interested and then move on or they leave. Um, and so right away, I did a Mother's Day one and I just said, hey, me and American Greetings are making you know this about Mother's Day, celebrating awesome mothers. I'm celebrating my mom. And then I went right into it type of thing. And then you also have to put it in your description box down below somewhere. It doesn't have to be in the top paragraph just somewhere. Um, so Got yeah. it, that this is sponsored. Facebook too. If you're gonna make a one of those short Tasty Style Facebook videos, you wanna make sure in that first you know, cover photo where you're talking somewhere along the line you know, with American Greetings or whoever it is you're working with. And then if you, I don't talk in my Facebook videos, those aren't the style that do well there, so I don't do it there. But in the link as right. well, you know, hashtag ad or you know, ad or however you right. disclose. But right, sure yeah. In no, the I, video I, and in whatever text you're using. Yeah. Yeah, very important. <laughs> Nobody wants to piss off the that. Way. So I think we have some questions. Yes. Ashley, how has the rise of video impacted the written aspect of your content? And this is from Be More. Yeah, that's a really great question. I I fell into blogging and honestly, I'm a terrible writer. <laughs> I do not like the writing aspect of blogging. I never have. And so I'm a little bit different. Uh, for me, it I, I really sell people on my personality and I should have been doing video five years ago. And <laughs> so, um, so I have just wholeheartedly jumped into video and I no longer do any tutorial style posts in my blog. In fact, when I do a video for a blog post that maybe had tutorial pictures, I take them out, I get rid of them. Um, I make my posts for the most part, pretty short. Uh, you know, the, the top picture that's like shows above the line and then a little bit of text in my video, a little bit more text. And within the text surrounding my video, I do try to give teasers or hints into what the video talks about, but I really want people to watch the video and then, you know, a closing mm -hmm. picture and then I'm out. So my posts are shorter for sure. Uh, and then I always Got include it. the recipe in, in there too. So, but yeah, I, my storytelling is in the video, not really in the post. I always... Uh, you know, because I don't want my posts to just be pictures, there's definitely still a written story within there, but mm -hmm. I, I tell the majority of the story um, in the video itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I totally get it. But again, it's all about storytelling. It's it is. just what medium you're doing. It is, for you're, sure. You're, you're using. Yeah. So, okay, so wait, so we've got some more questions. Okay, so, uh, so one is actually... Here to me with Blab announcing they will no longer be supporting the content creator features on this platform. What platforms are you thinking of moving your content to? Well, I just read an article this morning that Facebook Live is now going to be you're going to be able to have two Facebook Lives at once. So you could kind of do this where you're having a conversation. I don't know when they're rolling that out. And I just saw it as like a headline. And also, of course, they're going you're going to be able to do like the um, the Snapchat kind of faces and things like that on Facebook Live. So even if Blab somehow does goes away, there are other ways to do this like Google Hangouts. And again, as Ashley Ashley's talking about, we're moving to video. Like it's just the way it is. So everybody is is trying to pile on in terms of giving you tools to do video. For sure. Uh, so so that is yeah, that's my if you guys have any other thoughts on that. And then there were a couple others. Okay, let's see. Um, special camera to record videos. Um, yeah, I uh, I started with my DSLRs and I use two currently and I'm uh, looking, I'm actually adding a third angle to my shots because some, uh, there's so many different ways you can film and find the way that works for you. Uh, one of my girlfriends, she films herself, then she films the food, then films herself, then films the food. Another one films all the food and then herself redoing it all. Like 
it's kind of up to you personally. I can't redo a cake. <laughs> I can't remake an 18 hour cake. So I have as many cameras pointed at that as possible so I can pick my angles later. So I'm looking to add a third camera and I'm getting a camcorder this time because the camcorders have better autofocus. Right now I'm crawling back up on my counter and refocusing anytime I change the depth of field into my video and that's kind of a pain. Um, so my front camera, I'm gonna keep my DSLR. At one of the side angles, I'll keep DSLR because they can just kind of focus on that plane. But my overhead camera, I'm looking to switch to that. But I've spent you know, over a year and a half doing this. I've built something. Don't put money into it until you've hit that point. Like this is one of those great platforms that you can use what you have. You can use this. Uh, I have a iPhone 6S, right? And those record in 4K now. I mean, these are you have, get a, um, my tips for video is the most important thing is audio. If people cannot hear you, they won't stay. Uh, Periscope, Facebook Live, YouTube Live, YouTube edited videos. Um, I get a, uh, a lav mic that I plug into my shirt and that plugs right into the base of my phone. Audio is by far the most important. First thing you should spend money on is a good mic. Um, when I'm overdoing videos, I have a good desktop mic for when I'm talking over myself. Um, and then uh, lighting is next. Uh, if it's too dark, if it's too yellow, you know, if it like in food photography, we're all about natural light. Video is all artificial. It really is. Mm -hmm. Now, I film during the day and I just use mm -hmm. supplemental light, but you definitely are going to need some kind of artificial light. And then uh, after that, then the quality of the video. Quality of the video is third. So use whatever video you have. Just make sure you have a tripod. You know, watching those videos or somebody's holding it make me nauseous. Don't do that to your so you. You don't have somebody film you. You've I got do tripod everything set myself. Up. I do everything myself. Wow. I kick my kids out for the day. Uh, I'm more comfortable that way, yeah. honestly, <laughs> um, than having my, you know, my kids are there sometimes when I'm not finished and they're home from school, but it's always a little awkward being watched. I don't know. I, it's different. I know thousands of people, people are going to watch it, but uh, let's find your comfort level and film that way. So, <laughs> but yeah. Okay. Ashley, I'm, I'm giving the uh, the time check warning. Thank yes. you so much for joining us. I'm going to do rapid fire for awesome. you too. What what is your favorite recipe to cook? Um, well, uh, cheesecakes probably right now. I'm working on a cheesecake ebook, so <laughs> I'm making a lot of cheesecakes. So cheesecakes right now are my favorite, and I'm a little obsessed with the perfect cheesecake. In fact, it's my most popular video on my YouTube channel. So I hate when people. So it is. On, it. So we can find that on your YouTube. Yeah, my very first video. Okay. All right. And your favorite app on your phone doesn't have to be food related. Um, gosh, probably Instagram. I really only have things for work mm -hmm. on my phone. <laughs> if it's not for work, it's not on there. <laughs> okay. So wait, somebody just quickly asked what editing software. Do uh, you I use, use Adobe Premiere Pro. You can start with iMovie or the free movie maker on Windows, which is really not good. Uh, but you're going to quickly want to move into something that has more capabilities. And if you're already familiar with Adobe products because you use it for food photography, definitely that's the one I use for video. If you're not familiar and you're looking for something a little bit easier, Final Cut Pro 10 is also a great way to go. Um, since I was already in the Adobe family, I just use the Adobe Premiere Pro, but um, Final Cut Pro is also great. And it's kind of like Canon and Nikon's. It's really the one that you learn from is the one that you like. They're both fantastic softwares. Okay, somebody's excited about your cheese. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and if you want to learn okay. video, please, 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 Bitter Treat is in September in Park City, and I'm obsessed with helping others do their channel, so I'll put that in the chat, but we, yes. I want to teach. Yes. That's what I really love doing. I love making this. I love teaching others and getting their excitement when they get involved, so. So follow Ashley, follow Jessica Gavin. If Jessica's still in here, Make sure you both put your information in the comments and look for them. And I think Bakespace has already put our information in the comments. Um, so, yes. yes thank you're you. Welcome. To, thank you, Ashley. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Okay. All right. I think we have, we're, we're just about ready to wrap up. All right. Let's, um, should we quickly want to go over Instagram? Sure. I, yeah. I know you like Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what I was saying earlier is, uh, we mostly use Instagram for brand building, which is, it's a big part of who we are, uh, because we have beautiful photos and we like to show them off and we like to show off other people's work on our Instagram yeah. page. So in fact, if you're looking for our Instagram, it's just catch my party. Uh, and so that's what we do, but we don't sell anything specifically. Whereas Keisha, you could talk to 
selling via Instagram. I, I don't think Instagram is a good way to get traffic, mm -hmm. but it right. is a good way to sell. Yeah, I've so noticed that. That's, yeah. That's been my experience. And, and some people have like created a whole business on Instagram. They're not even yeah. bloggers. Yep. Yeah. They just sell on Instagram with their link using the link in their bio. Yeah. 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 It's absolutely true. I know that um, there are a, quite a few, they're actually called Instagrammers who basically that's exactly what they do. They just sell everything through Instagram. They tell their story through Instagram. So it's definitely, I think it'll be around for a while. I think it's definitely a useful um, social platform to be on. And I would say be aware Instagram is going to mm -hmm. a smart feed. Right. It hasn't happened yet for that. our account because we can still see the chronological right. order of yeah. posts. So it's even more important now to grow your following because that indicates to Instagram your account is worth following and chances are it will then show your posts to more people. Yeah. It's going to be a little bit like Facebook where all of a sudden the reach gets a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. So also beautiful photos on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Like people complain that people, that it's not real, that it's kind of fake because everybody is editing their photos, but that's just yeah. what it is. Yeah, that's what people so, want. I think it's beautiful. And go narrow. <laughs> go narrow. It is beautiful. It puts me Why? in a good mood. Go narrow, which yeah. is, which is do not, if you are a, I always say this, if you design cupcakes, don't put your kids on your Instagram feed at the, at the right. park. Like people don't care. So have <laughs> two Instagram accounts, one that's personal that you can share with your friends and one that is business. Mm -hmm. And so let's say you do a whole host of things. Notice which posts mm -hmm. do the best and go make yeah. more of that. So if all of a sudden your food is doing great, I wouldn't be putting as many crafts on your Instagram page. I'd be doing more food. Because people will go to you as I know that person is going to show me a really beautiful right. food photo. Also, I've been starting to use this app called a color story, hmm. which you can edit your photos in and it just makes them brighter and pop more. So check that out. I think I paid. I've two, heard about oh, that. My phone, two or three dollars. So hmm. uh, try that to see. Sorry. Um, <laughs> wait, babe, can you get that? Or turn, or turn it off. Oh, sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, embarrassing. Uh, live. live. <laughs> okay. So, so check out a color story because I have, like, if you look at our feed, it is, you know, I've tried to brighten photos. Photos that are brighter tend yeah. to do well yeah. on Instagram. Uh, so, so, you know, find, it, this is what I would say. This is always my advice. Find what is working for you and go make mm -hmm. more of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you don't have to be on every social media platform if your audience tends to respond to you most, say, on Instagram or Pinterest. You might want to have a little bit of a presence, but you don't have to be posting on all these different all the time, all these different. Yeah, platforms. and it's a lot to keep you know, up figure with. Out where with it's, it's a lot, lot to keep up with if you're trying to do that. What I try and do is um, link. I think I have my Twitter and Facebook linked to my Instagram so that it automatically shoots that out. And then I usually do my Pinterest from my blog posts. And then um, I think my Pinterest is tied to my Twitter and then my Twitter is tied back to my Facebook. So it kind of saves me a little bit of time that way. And I know that they're all going out. And then of course, if I wanna change anything on any of those, I can always go back in and edit, you know, whatever I, don't want to show up or, you know, change the wording and text of any of that that's gone out through the LinkedIn. Website. And how, how are you, how are you linking? So in Instagram, linking? I believe you can connect your Twitter and your Facebook. So when you actually take a photo, you can just choose to have it go to your Facebook or your Twitter feed. Um, there is a way to do it. So it goes to your business page. And for some reason, like at one point it worked for me and then I think I changed my password and then it stopped working. So you have to be mindful, like if you're going to change your password, that it might not link to your Facebook or Twitter. So you're, right. you're going to have to update it, you know, on your phone as well as, you know, on your, your laptop or desktop or what have you. Um, and Pinterest will connect to Facebook and Twitter, I believe. But I think you have to select, 
you know, check it or uncheck it um, for it to go to Pinterest or Twitter. So it all, and then Google Plus will show up when you post to your blog. It'll kind of do it for you as long as it. All right, got it. No, all right. I'm going to ask you rapid fired questions too. Okay. All right, Jillian, I'm going to start with you. Your favorite recipe to cook? Brussels sprouts. Yeah? That's what I would say. Yeah, How do you like cook bait, them? like, like, I, uh, we broil, I broil Brussels sprouts and I put some vinegar on them and lots of olive oil and they're so delicious. I'm totally in a Brussels sprouts place right now, okay. which is funny because as a kid, it was like, you could never yeah. get me to eat a Brussels sprout, but they are so like right now at the farmer's market, they're so sweet and delicious. So I just broil them and, oh. So, so now you know you're going to have to put that recipe up on Catch My Party. I know, and it's not on our it's not on our You're going to have to do okay. that now. Okay, yes. <laughs> okay, yes. your favorite app on your phone? Uh, I would say uh, definitely Instagram. I love Instagram, and I'm really liking Snapchat. Really? So, yeah, okay. like, it's fun. It's really fun. And it's, again, like, whereas before on Instagram – I would put behind the scenes photos. I do not do that anymore. Instagram is all about curated, but where I will put me doing something weird or fun or something, I will put that on Snapchat. Okay. So Snapchat is for me much more casual and playful and you know, just goofy. Okay. So that's that's what I would say. Okay. So we know where to find Jillian. <laughs> yeah, and I'm a catch my party on Snapchat okay. and catch my party on Instagram. Okay. All right, Keish, your favorite thing to cook? Everything. Oh, my God. Okay, so, well, no, I'm serious. <laughs> like, I love to get in the kitchen and cook. And, I mean, when I can get in there, because usually because, thank God, my husband is retired, so he usually takes over. And he's from the South and can cook. I am not from the South. I am a straight-up Connecticut Yankee. So <laughs> we're talking about pasta and lobster over here. So that's you know, that's me, but I, I really do like to cook everything, but like right now I'm into doing quick, like quick skillet dishes of anything, like quick skillet chicken and peppers and onions. And I think it's probably because, you know, I'm doing the whole low carb, high fat thing. So that and anything yeah. with bacon in it, um, like crack slaw, which is basically coleslaw mix, <laughs> toasted sesame seed oil, um, ground beef. It's so good. It is so good. And I think you like you put soy sauce and garlic in it and it's really quick and it's super easy. Um, my daughter is 11 now and she helps me make it because that's how easy it is. You either just, you know, chop up some cabbage real quick or just buy a bag of coleslaw and just, it's remarkable. Google that is not on your blog. Slaw. It, it needs to be. That's not, it yeah, needs to be. I have not seen that. It is thebomb.com. It is good. So mm -hmm. that's, Kind of like my favorite thing right now to be making, but I like so, to cook everything. That needs to go on your blog and your ribs. Why didn't you say your ribs? Oh my gosh! Mm -hmm. Well, because my ribs had had you know my ribs had too much to drink the day I made the ribs. So <laughs> I'm supposed to be sharing how to make ribs effortlessly, and then I took a sip of wine and <laughs> they had their mm -hmm. moment on the grill. So mm -hmm. okay, all right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Your favorite app on your phone? Oh, Instagram. Definitely yeah. Instagram. Okay. Yep. All I right. I love it. And what about you? Favorite to make? Favorite app on your phone? Um, champagne cupcakes. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Ooh. How do you make them? Oh, I, I do a champagne reduction in the, both for the cupcake and for the frosting. Yeah, it's a few steps. Uh, it is actually on my blog, but I do. Yeah, okay. What okay. I do. So, what should people search on your blog to find it? Champagne cupcakes. <laughs> so, can I get a high okay. five for champagne? Kylie, I can't imagine that you love champagne yeah, that yeah, much. I, I champagne. would have never guessed. <laughs> I know. I do. I love me some champagne. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, and I think, uh, and my favorite app on my phone is probably Pinterest. I. Oh, yeah, I, I'm not too much on Instagram. I, I do it, but I, you know, Pinterest is so easy. I can be, you know, watching TV and I'm like looking for some fun things on Pinterest. And mm -hmm. yeah, I do like it. 
And what quick, quick, quick question that was asked here, and by the way, lots of people are liking your champagne, so put a link to your champagne oh, okay. cupcakes I will. in here. Uh, but what schedulers do you guys use to schedule um, posts? I'm recently starting doing Tailwind. I, oh, I use um, sometimes I use Hootsuite if I'm in a, if I'm doing a campaign that requires a lot of different steps. If I'm world when I do World Market, they have like 15 different posts that you do. Then I use Hootsuite. Um, what else do I use? Uh, I use Ahology sometimes too. Mm -hmm. um, what else is out there? God, there's so many good ones. If anyone has questions on on the, any of these social media, uh, email us. Is Crystal know. still here, Crystal Lee? Because I know she does, um, like, with Facebook. I don't know if we really touched on Facebook too much because really if she's still here. Yeah, if she's still here because she's given me a lot of good tips on um, kind of what people are, what your audience is looking for and who you want to kind of provide content or information to through Facebook. And I know she's helped me a lot with different things there. As, I mean, she kind of sort of knows it like the back of her hands, if you ask me. I don't know if she's, I see her picture, but I don't know if she can get on or not. Ashley said she uses Co schedule, recipe, easy books, uses Buffer. Yeah, there's a lot of good ones yeah, out so there. We, we definitely use Tailwind mm -hmm. for Pinterest. We schedule about 50 to 60 pins a day on Pinterest. Pinterest. Um, it's great. And also we use Buffer for Twitter and for Google Plus, I think, Facebook, and, and it will Chris, also work Crystal with right Facebook. There. I, Hi, Crystal. <laughs> we, were, we were using Latergram for Instagram, yeah. but because I need to post, we're posting in real time, it didn't make sense for us, but I really like them. Mm -hmm. Uh, so those are kind of the schedulers that we use. And I've used Hootsuite, but I just think Buffer is a little more intuitive. We have like use. five minutes. I'm going to, um, we'll let Crystal in. Um, hit Crystal. She may have to hit the little button at the top of her um, browser. Crystal, she does social media. Crystal. Um, you will probably know her from doing, uh, she is the original Audrey Hepburn Tutu creator. That it's, um, no. it's not working. Off to the far right. You may click on the camera icon, icon Crystal. It's Why not? Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, she's, while we're trying to get her in, I know we'd have, we have to wrap up really quickly, but um, anyway, while we're waiting for her, hopefully Crystal can, can pop in. I just want to say thank you to Bake Space and Tech Munch for having us here today. This was a lot of fun. We've never done this before. At least I haven't done this before. Um, and I wanted to tell, say thank you to Keisha and Jillian for uh, doing this oh. with me. It was really fun and uh I love you girls for coming along with us with me. <laughs> it was me really too. fun. I, I really of enjoyed course. it. It was great getting ideas from everybody and um, answering the questions. Ashley and Jessica are awesome. Okay, I don't think we're going to get Crystal. She's trying again. Oh, okay. She's yeah, because I think it's there's a button at the top there that you have to kind of click on. Yeah, I don't know if she's ever used Lab before. But um, if we were going to talk about the tools I definitely use um, Hootsuite like a lot and then Crystal, we have just a couple of minutes can you hear me hi yeah hi hi well um what I recommend on Facebook is to directly upload to Facebook they like that um, that's a good tip um, what other questions did you have about Facebook we were talking about, I remember when you discussed Which, with me finding your audience through, like if, oh, it's like for example, if you want to find people who like to purchase items from Pottery Barn, so you go to that page, and I think it's kind of how to, when you're looking at your stats and kind of making sure you reach the right type of audience that you want. Yeah, when you do ads, you can choose your audience. And I think you can choose your audience for your post. You just have to go into Facebook in your settings 
and um, you can pick who you most like to see it, and they will try to direct the post to them. Yeah, and that was like in the, because um, we were looking at stats, but I think it was, I'm trying to remember, it was a little while ago. Yeah. You, can do, you can do like a smart search also. Um, okay. So you can do the smart search, you know, on your regular account, not on your business account. You can just go in and say people who are fans of Pottery Barn, if you wanted to market to them, and then you could find out what other things they're interested in. And then you can put those in your tags and your audience. Right. Okay. So, like, I guess for this group, we would say, like, William Sonoma, Sir Latab, um, yeah. you know. Oh, okay. What yeah. else is there? Yeah. I can't oh, I think of that. any. Ace May Delish. Oh, Dean you and know, DeLuca, different, things like that. Sure. Yeah. Different, different food blogs or people that you like. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, see? That's okay. I didn't know it until she told me. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Well, I am actually, I have an Etsy shop, which I learned how to do this for my Etsy shop, but I also do social media during the day as my day job. So I get to research all this stuff and learn a bunch of fun things. And I share with Keisha, we talk daily mm -hmm. too. So. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for sharing that with us, Crystal. Oh, sure. Hey, pop it. Thank um, you. Make sure you, you put your Etsy address in the comments so people can find you. Okay, I sure will. Thank you, Crystal. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. And, and one thing that I would say is to remember that your audience is, it's funny, you think that your audience on Instagram is the same as your audience on Pinterest, is the same as your audience on Facebook, and it's not mm -hmm. true. So it's like you need to think about them differently and learn about each mm -hmm. one. Because, and I don't know if you guys feel this way, but like sometimes I'll be like, oh my God, I posted it on Facebook. Everybody on whatever other platform will have already seen it. And it's not true. So really think about them differently. Yeah, and, and look at your stats too. Like it's really key to find out where, I'm always interested in what countries people are coming from because I get a lot of traffic after the United States, I'm getting a lot of traffic on Facebook, believe it or not, from um, like the Middle Eastern countries, um, like India, Pakistan, <laughs> I know it's so weird, Saudi Arabia. But if you kind of, like if I look at my Facebook feed and look who's following me, there are a lot of party people in those countries mm -hmm. I would have never have guessed. And they yeah. I mean, they're like elaborate yeah celebrations they are huge so that would make sense and you know i can see them like following or liking photos on my my page and you know you go kind of just you know want to see where people are coming from and that that's that's so true whereas like on my blog mostly everybody is coming from the united states and and england that's where readers are coming from and then on my etsy shop after the united states people are liking, liking my products from Australia. So it's very different. But it's not even mm -hmm. geographical, meaning like for us, for example, on Facebook, we just, we don't, we, we do some parties, but mostly our audience on Facebook likes mm -hmm. recipes. They like video. Uh, and I would never, I wouldn't be posting that on our other channels, but it's kind of like on Facebook, I, I think our audience just kind of wants to yeah. be entertained. You know, they just want to like scroll through and, and find interesting stuff. Like they're not as focused on say parties as they might be on our Pinterest. It's all party stuff that we share. So it's like figuring out what works yes. with each audience and do, putting that content right in front yeah. of them. Okay, ladies, I think our time is up. I know we could go on and on and on. And Jessica, she <laughs> just made a great point in the comments about joining an ad network, Mediavine. I'm with Mediavine. I love them. Um, so, but there's uh, other great ones out there. There, um, but anyway, there's we could go on and on. So, yeah. thank you, Babette. Thank you, Big Space. Thank, thank you, TechCrunch, for having us. I hope that um, you all found some. Is that is she coming in? Hi. 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 <laughs> oh wait, and. And if you guys, if you guys have questions, please, yes. I don't know about you, but feel free to email me at Jillian at catchmyparty.com. Or if you have st social media questions, 
email me at jillian at milotree.com, which is our pop-up that's free that you can add to your blog to grow your social. Yes. So that, you know, I'm, I'm here. Yep. If you have any questions about champagne cupcakes, <laughs> I think they probably have more questions than just champagne. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I mean, those are nice. Those are nice. But yeah. you did give some really good advice. Yeah. So we appreciate that. No, thank you guys so thank much you. for all your time.